cascade, or if you prefer, a domino effect of failures elsewhere, which apparently is just what happened this afternoon in the Northeast. As for the federal government's response to the blackout, following that part of the story for us is CBS News correspondent Cheryl Atkinson in our Washington Bureau. Cheryl. Dan, Washington, D.C. and all its official government forces went on guard when word of the giant blackout began to spread. The FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, the White House, the Energy Department, everyone got on the phone or went into meetings. Tonight, on a trip to California, President Bush spoke of the outages. Obviously, the sooner we can get electricity up, the more normal people's lives will become. Uh, the um, one thing I think I can say for certain is that this was not a terrorist act. According to the Treasury Department, the financial markets are in good shape. Power went out after the markets closed, so the closings were orderly and no data was lost. It's expected to be business as usual tomorrow. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission reports nine nuclear reactors in four states went offline. New York, New Jersey, Ohio, and Michigan. That's normal in a power outage because they rely to some extent on electricity to operate. The Department of Homeland Security says it has emergency teams poised to assist where needed, but that there haven't been requests for that kind of help yet from any local or state governments. Dan? Thanks, Cheryl Atkinson. Most people in the blackout areas have faced aggravating, but overall relatively minor inconveniences. But for health officials, a loss of electricity can be life or death. CBS News 48 Hours correspondent Aaron Moriarty went to see how one New York City hospital faced the emergency. Aaron? Well, Dan, there's good news. Officials at most New York hospitals say everything's operating fine. They have backup power. But earlier today, there was certainly a moment of concern for people like Sonomi Abramson, who thought her mother was right in the middle of kidney surgery at Roosevelt Hospital when the power went out. But she's very sick, and I'm not even sure she's going to make it through this. I watched her be rolled in personally at 3.30. At 3.30, and the in power went out 45 minutes later. Right. And he said it would take approximately 40 minutes to an hour and a half. Well, you never know. I mean, who knows? I mean, you're not going to hold anybody to that. But I'm assuming that she was right in the middle of surgery. But moments later, her mother's surgeon came out. Okay. She's OK. Everything went fine. I talked okay. to her dad. But She's what, fine. Okay. She actually went out right after. No, she wasn't in surgery. Was right after? Yeah, she, the power went out right after we had finished. Okay. Thank goodness. Did you just come out from work? I just did. What's the situation in there? Uh, everything is calm. Uh, this is, seems to be a plan of action. Everybody, um, the elevators are down. Everybody's taking the stairs, but there's a lot of uh, direction to where to go. What I saw today were people acting intelligently and courageously and, and with kindness and taking care of each other, directing traffic, looking out for one another. It was fantastic. Hospital officials say they do expect a spike in the number of emergencies tonight as people knock into furniture and walls in their dark apartments. But the good news again is it hasn't happened so far. Dan? Aaron Moriarty, thanks. Coming up next on this West Coast edition of the CBS Evening News, Schwarzenegger under fire as the California recall campaign gets hotter.